Hey everybody, welcome to Independence at the Potomatic. We're doing a show tonight. I'm going to do a bunch of different things. I uh, didn't have a show Saturday. I was taken out of the equation. Uh, part of the takeout was I was, I've been experimenting with what I call a magnetic vortex I've been working on. And I've been uh, working at neutralizing nanotechnology in the body uh, in regard to... <clears throat> You know, reducing it, shutting it off, so that the body can better pull it out of the system. Uh, basically, I've been experimenting on this for the last couple of days, and yesterday the dam broke, and basically there was a major, major, major release. And I uh, was going through the process of seeing what was coming out, and uh, the flush that came out of my guts particulates I saw, the biofilm that I was seeing, the tiny, tiny uh, nanoparticulates, the saturation of the, of the load that was coming out, and it was gone, done through several times in a day. So this is one of the things to expect for those of you who've been exposed to high levels of nanoparticle poisoning. You may find that uh, as you go through the process, you may find that um, as you delayer the build up in the cells, you delay the build up in the skin, you delay delay the build up on the insides because nano nanotechnology is a self assembling, self replicating, self repairing technology. In other words, it's running on a program. And this program has to be neutralized in order for it to be effectively removed from the body. You can remove it, but in removing it from the body, if you don't disengage the programming, it can cause a lot of damage into the cells, the tissues, and so forth. So as you shut it off, as you negate it, neutralize it, to pull it out of the system, you may find it will just come out on its own when you're using the bucket, the nano triangle, even just a regular saline bath, you may see a huge results. What I was doing basically was creating a multiple pulse uh, system where I'm having a, a basically a, uh, a motor with a magnet attached to it and a shaft that's stuck out with a, an attachment I, I designed that has magnets on it so that when it spins the magnet behind it creates a field where it's repelling and the, and the magnets on the front have another field so you have a multiple field effect going on as it's spinning and any magnet you put in front of it creates another field, or another ma major field. So basically it's a rapid pulsing system because as this thing is spinning at whatever revolutions is spinning, when it hits the magnets, it creates a multiple field or, or um, um, rep or highly repetitive field. So it's a ca constant pulse. And so I was experimenting and hitting it all over my body and as a result, I uh, was targeting my gut, I was targeting my lower extremities and again, uh, it all came out <laughs> literally Now I'm going to talk about one other thing another form of synthetic biology is called the M gene. I Never bought into I haven't bought into of lately that the STDs that we're dealing with today are a normal type of biology I've often said that these things are a form of nano construct or synthetic biology. Well, let me point something out to you It's called mycoplasma genitalium. Uh, synthetic genomics is a, is a nascent field of synthetic biology that uses the aspects of genetic modifications on pre-existing life forms or artificial gene synthesis to create new DNA of entire life forms. In other words, I can take what I, what's already there and alter it to become something different. Now some of you are suffering with some of the uh, health issues in regard to an STD. So let me read something to you here. Mycoplasma genitalium, commonly known as MGen, is a sexually transmitted small and pathological bacterium on the ciliated epithelial cells and urinary and genital tracts in human. MGen is recognized sexually transmitted infection with alarmingly increasing prevalence. Now, let me read something to you. Doesn't, I mean, astromycin doesn't, doesn't hit it. Um, this targets specifically the ur urinary tract in both men and women. Uh, the cervix of the women and the pelvic region. That's where a lot of you are being hit. And it has similar effects as chlamydia. But it's not chlamydia. <laughs> it 
Okay, it can have infection with MGen produces a combination of clinical symptoms, but can be asymptomatic. It causes inflammation in the urethra, uh, both in men and women, which is associated with muc mucopurulent discharge. So some women are having this excessive discharge in the urinary tract uh, and burning while urinating. In women, it causes cervicitis, pelvic inflammatory diseases, including endometriosis and salpingitis. Uh, Holy cow. Most common signs are painful urination or watery discharge from the penis for the men. Now, when you're looking at this research, it does not look like a normal biological agent. It looks like somebody played with this. Somebody tampered with this. Somebody created this. Took a common, normal pathology and kind of gave it a little bit, a little bit more power, a little bit more strength. So when you're looking at some of this stuff, you really have to look at what's going on today and understand, um, you know, what it is. Um, okay, it, this thing does not operate on the same principle as a bacteria. It has no, it has, what's to say here, lacking a cell wall. It just uses, it's using you as a wall. Isn't that interesting? And the, the treatment for this thing is a five-day treatment with certain things, certain chemicals. And if you're not, if you only apply it one time, it can actually become resistant to whatever you're doing. So when you're actually looking at this thing, this is something that was created. And I've often said that a lot of, this, a lot of things today that we're being affected with has to do with DNA alterations with using nanotechnology or nanobiology. Let me... Successful creation of a synthetic bacterium, which is named Mycoplasmum genitalium. Successful creation of a synthetic bacterium. <laughs> Called Mycoplasma genitalium. They got it from that area of the body, from the genitals. Okay. So again, when you're looking at this, look up the term MGen for those of you who are dealing with some kind of STD. Maybe what you were told is not entirely accurate. Okay, may not be entirely accurate. And you may be able to find a real solution as a result of understanding how a DNA may have been altered to create the phenomenon that's going on in your system. We have been corrupted and violated because of, again, direct or indirect intervention with DNA. We're going to touch upon as well with the male genitalia and the female genitalia. Now, the nanoparticles will translocate throughout the body. The seed, the sac, will be loaded with nano. The uterus, the egg, the cervix, the tunnel of love, I call it, from the entry point to the back end, will be loaded with nano. So how do we flush this out of our genitals? How do we get this out of our system? Well, for the guys, it's a little, it's, it's, for both the guys and the gals, it, it's, it's a little different procedure, but uh, what you're doing for primarily is with the guys, you're taking a jar, a wide mouth jar, doesn't matter what size it is, is height-wise, you want it wide enough where you can put your sac and your penis inside this because you're going to put a solution of vinegar, water, salt, and iodine. <clears throat> and this is going to be a coiled jar so that in the coiling you're going to create a, you're going to attach a flasher unit to it, uh, a power supply, and you're going to pulse this thing. And, what is, and you, if you want, add magnets to it in the coiling so that the amplification will increase. So what I did is I taped um, three bar magnets on the bottom and I attached some magnets along the side so that it amplified the field. Due to pulsing for five minutes, this is going to create a whole new concept for um, uh, your genital hygiene, especially for you guys that are not circumcised. You will have a huge buildup in the foreskin. So when you put this in the jar and you put this, the vinegar, the vinegar you'll put 30% or one third of the solution will be vinegar, the rest will be water and you'll add your iodine and you'll add your salt, dissolve that. Uh, you can add other things too if you want to add, if you think you can handle it, you can add ascorbic acid, you can add, add uh, even a little copper chloride, again to disinfect. 
and you may find that after about five to seven minutes when you aim the flashlight after you pull out into the container you will see your solution will be loaded and I mean loaded with metallic material floating in the solution for you women you women are have you have your chamber already built in now what you're going to do is you're going to create a douche effect where you're going to add the same solution of vinegar, water, salt, and iodine. And what you're going to do is you're going to douche your body and you're going to hold it inside. If you can't, can't hold it, get a cork, literally. Cork it. Uh, plug it up. Either use a Kotex, use a handkerchief, whatever. But what you're going to do is you're going to lay down and you're going to put a triangle on your system or some kind of uh, pulsing unit on your, on your pelvic region. And you're going to allow this to, again, pulse you five to seven minutes and then go drain into the, into the washroom. And again, when you look at what comes out of you, you might be surprised at the heavy meta metallic load that is going to be coming out from your genital region. You'll sanitize, you'll cleanse, and you'll purge your system out of a lot of mucus that might be built up in there. You might, you'll also purge yourself out of the high-level metal issues going on. A lot of you are having serious uh, contraction issues, serious um, issues in regard to uh, when you're mensing. Some of you are seeing a thickening of the blood coming out. That would be because of the high concentration of buildup along the uterine wall. And again, this may help reduce and bring this down and re alleviate uh, your cycle when you are going through the process of purging or, or purifying your body. Both genders need to do this regularly. Some of you guys will feel something moving in your genitals, in your in your sack or your balls, so just put it in plain old simple English so you know what I'm talking about. You'll feel like an itchy feeling or movement going on and you go to scratch it and it seems like it's okay for a short interim or you constantly keep on you know, trying to adjust yourself or, again, uh, shut down the irritation. Again, this is the nanoparticulates moving through your sac, shredding your testicular uh, canals or tubes inside the sac. So this will help, again, reduce the load. You have to recognize that this stuff, when you're consuming it, breathing it, drinking it, will not just go in one part of the body. When they tell you dimatrous earth does not get caught up in the bloodstream, they're full of shit. End of story. This stuff will penetrate the colon uh, and really go through the colon, uh, permeate right through it. It will connect with the cells, will shut down the cells' communication network. It will then attach itself to the skeletal system and the muscular skeletal system, further causing damage. And you may find a lot of aches and pains, a lot of... Uh, immobility. You may even find a lot of um, issues going on in the body that don't normally happen. It's because the cells can't communicate. Uh, we've, been con we've been exposed to high levels of silica. Whether it's organic or inorganic, there is absolutely no way you can break it down. It can, uh, on a nano scale, even on a micron scale, translocate through the body and then get caught up in the system. When they tell you to use this stuff to clearing out the colon, it can it can perforate the colon, and sometimes it can cause more problems than it fixes. So this is not something you really want to be looking at. When we're looking at the nano silica, it has been in the bread, in the grains, all grains, all breads, whether it's it's uh, gluten free or otherwise. They have put it in since 1960. We've had over five, almost six decades of contamination with the grain alone. 